I want to tell y'all the absolutely horrifying story on how we discovered that our youngest daughter, um, Sarah Grace, had developed a severe tree nut allergy. It looks like we about to get us some rain. <laughs> and as you can tell, my voice is still gone. My throat was killing me last several days. Now it's perfectly fine. My nose, clear. I just can't hardly speak, so bear with me. But here we are again, Sunday evening, right before evening service, making the YouTube video at the last minute. Just like everything else we do. Well, mostly last minute, but that's okay. It'll still be up for you, so <laughs> don't worry about it. But before we go back to church, I'm letting little Princess Mia here burn off some energy outside. But while we do that, I want to tell you all the absolutely horrifying story on how we discovered that our youngest daughter, um, Sarah Grace, had developed a severe tree nut allergy. But in order to do that, I'm going to start at the very beginning of this whole thing with her big sister, Mackenzie. See, that whole thing started a while back, like a couple years ago. We was at my father-in-law's house, and he just got a mess of pecans. And while he was uh, shelling these pecans, um, Mackenzie was on the floor, like rolling around on the carpet, just playing with some toys and stuff. A few minutes later, she started breaking out. <laughs> Man, my voice is terrible. She started itching, uh, you know, scratching everywhere, breaking out these little rashes. And come to find out, my mother-in-law had just cleaned that carpet with something today, and we were thinking that she was reacting to some kind of cleaning powders that she put on the carpet. So they got her up, she went and took a shower, scrubbed off everything. Uh, we thought we were good. So that whole thing was over. And then a while later, she was eating um, some brownies at the church that some, somebody had made at like, a, we had an event, everybody was eating supper there. That was part of the dessert, so she was eating the brownie. A few minutes later, she started having the same exact rash. And we're thinking like, what in the world? We thought it was a clean the powders. Clearly that's not it, because it's happening again. It's in a totally different environment. And then that was kind of up for question what happened there. But And then later on, she was eating a pecan spin, some sweet little dessert things, like like little swirls things, you know, that your grandma has in her cabinet. She was eating one of them, the same rash and itch and everything started all over again. So we said, wait a minute. The first scenario was the, the shelling of the pecans. Then it was the uh, pecan brownies, and then it was a pecan spin. So there it is, pecans. And I think she had an appointment made. Uh, they did some kind of uh, food allergy testing, and they come back that, yes, she was, in fact, allergic to uh, tree nuts. And from what I remember, like, very, very, very mildly allergic to, to peanuts. But nothing, that's nothing to worry about. But the big thing was tree nuts because we was getting a, a skin reaction. So that's cleared up. Now, fast forward a little bit. All right, I'm back. Had to go put Mia back up in the kennel because we're about to leave. Anyways, after that, situation was cleared up. Fast forward a little while. Mackenzie had uh, some kind of appointment, some kind of appointment in Birmingham involving her cochlear implant. Can't remember exactly what it was. So we left Birmingham. <coughs> On our way back, and we uh, we got to around the Montgomery area, and Megan was snacking on some cashews. Uh, the word scares the crap out of me now. She was crunching on some uh, some cashews, and she was breaking them up in halves and breaking those halves into halves. So she was giving a tiny little quarter piece of cashew to Sarah. Sarah was little. I can't remember how. She may have been like, I don't know, two. She was giving Sarah these tiny pieces of cashew. A couple of minutes later, Sarah started sneezing and coughing. And back then, when she would get uncomfortable or get tired or something, she would say, Mommy, I want you. And she was trying to get Megan to take her out of a car seat because she was going down the road. And then she started, like, sticking her tongue out. And she was, like, scratching on her tongue and biting on her tongue. And her tongue started swelling up really fast. She, and from what I remember, her tongue was, like, white. It had bumps on it. It started swelling. Her face got really, really red. Her eyes were getting red. She was getting these these welts and splotches on her skin so we're thinking crap she's reacting to cashews just like mckenzie has the tree nut allergy so we pulled over uh and we knew that this was serious but we didn't it didn't click at that moment what could have happened but thank god that megan reacted fast enough to call an ambulance before it got escalated. Like, as soon as we realized what was happening, she was reacting to the tree nuts, uh, reacting to the cashews. Megan called 
and notify the ambulance like she's reacting to the tree nuts. We're about to pull over, get our location, everything. So they were like pretty much aware of the situation and in route before it escalated. And it escalated extremely fast beyond anything I thought would happen. Uh, but her face and her throat started swelling up to the point it sounded like somebody it, it sounded like the way I'm talking now like it sounded like somebody had her by the throat crying and crying her face was I mean her face was like a balloon it was swelling up so bad and we were all frantic everybody's freaking out we had people from there was like a dollar store where we stopped people was running outside trying to help we got a location gave it to the ambulance they finally got there and I don't know who these two dudes were that showed up but they said it looks like she just got choked up like something went down the wrong hole in her throat. Like got something stuck in the windpipe. And we were like, are you kidding me? Her face does not look like this normally. Like he's watching me back there. But we, was all, we were like super, super, super freaking out. At this point, we're all out of the car. We got Sarah sitting in Megan's lap. They're in the front seat. Uh, oh, I'm out of breath. Well, I had to get in the truck because it was time to go. Tried out a fancy little phone holder up there on the dash. To let it hold the phone, but it was like shaking like an earthquake. Now my hand is. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the ambulance had pulled up on scene, and the two guys that were like completely unprofessional. Well, that was the first day on the job. That was awful. I'm telling you, it, I would share the pictures on here, but I'm not gonna do that. The, it was obvious, completely, completely obvious. There was something seriously wrong with our child. Because her face was like a balloon and it was it was bright red. She could not speak. It sounded like somebody had her by the throat, squeezing her throat. So And was throwing up. That was a the lead param, <coughs> the lead paramedic in that ambulance asked the two guys what medication had they administered yet? And they said nothing. And that, you remember that woman freaked yeah, out on them too. Yeah, she was mad. She, oh, she was so I'm furious. I'm pretty sure they got in a lot of trouble that I'm day. sure they did. They didn't do anything for her. We were begging them, please help our child. They did absolutely nothing. They they stood there for probably 10, maybe, it was like 10 minutes of just us begging them to help. They're like, she's fine. And then we called 911 again. Yeah, I was like, since No, else. that was, to, yeah, but they could not find us. We told them what we well, were beside. That was the worst. I was like, I was You're thinking like, we're beside Dollar General in this other place, and they're like, I, yeah. I knew that. I was like, I'm about to, I'm about to lose my child. This, this can't be happening. These people are not doing anything. But that, that paramedic and that ambulance has absolutely lost her mind. So you telling me that this child is clearly suffering from some allergy, allergy, allergic reaction, and you did nothing? So like, meanwhile, like Sarah Grace is like throwing up in my lap. It's everywhere. She's like really upset. I think she might have passed out. I can't remember. Um, after she threw up a few times. Yeah, okay. her oxygen intake. And we're is going like down off. the road in an ambulance, and like this lady is just chewing this man out. Oh, she was. But I'm talking about in the ambulance. They were like before they even took off. They put like two shots in each leg. Boom, 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 boom. Hitting her with this, putting this and this. They were doing so many things. And we get. We were, at that point, we made it from Birmingham to Montgomery. We was at the Montgomery ER. Bless those people's hearts. They did an amazing they were job. They so sweet. They jumped, they jumped on the ball like I that. I don't remember which one it was. I, I would have to say they saved her life because she yeah. was going downhill so fast. And I remember. There were so many people in that room. Uh, yeah. It was like, it was the, the scene was crazy. They they tried all these things. They were getting ready to do a, a, what they call it, a trachea tube. I think, I can't remember, yeah, that they tube get, that goes yeah, down her throat. Get ready to cut her throat and put a tube in. And one of the nurses said. Oh, were they going to cut it or just put it down her throat? They were going to cut her throat because it okay. was swollen. They couldn't get it in there. Okay, either way. So they were going to do the trachea yeah. tube. They said, let's try adrenaline. So they gave her a shot of adrenaline and it opened her airway enough they could get the tube in. Wait, the shot was like adrenaline. Huh? It wasn't actually adrenaline. It was like adrenaline and opened up the yeah. airways. Yeah. Whatever it was. I was freaking out, so my memory's a little fog. It opened up her airway enough that they could do what they had to do, and then they got her to the point where they could keep her stabilized. But for one thing, they didn't have any pediatric wing at this hospital, so they don't have the equipment they need for children, so they had to, <laughs> had to be left by me, which was fine. 
got to go back to Birmingham to UAB so they can continue to care for her there. So what was crazy, they sent us, we had a group of uh, uh, angel wing pilots. Remember them? Yep. It was supposed to get life lighted, but the weather was crazy. So they, we had angel, uh, the, the angel wing pilots driving uh, an ambulance. Well, the regular ambulance driver, ambulance, <laughs> ambulance. <laughs> ambulance driver, and then they, those two were in the back. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a, it was a guy with the angel wings up front too. It was four. No, he was driving because I rode with him, and I said I was freaking out because he looked really young, and I was like, "Are you old enough to be doing yeah. this?" The pilot, it was not a pilot. The angel wing guys, one of them was driving. No. No. Can we cut this? No. Anyways, carry on. We went to Birmingham. Yeah. Back to Birmingham. But we just not left hours ago. So they went as fast yeah. as they could to Birmingham. That was so scary because the weather was terrible. Oh, I was man. So scared. I, I asked that man. That's how I remember that. I was like, how long have you been doing this? And he's like, uh, about a year. And I was like, oh, my gosh. A rattlesnake. Again? The snakes are everywhere. That was like the third snake I've seen on the road just along the way to church. Jeez. Roll time. So we got to Birmingham, it was like maybe two o'clock in the morning, I don't know. Um, we got there and they had to give her another shot once she got there, I think it was. Anyways, so they, she stayed there for a few hours. They said that she was okay to go home. They were about to release her. They actually, I think, went to grab the paperwork and come back and get us. And like I called them back up there, I called the nurse's station. I was like, hey, something's not right. She started coughing again and I think, right, she, yeah. I think she threw up Because I remember again. they were going to bring our discharge papers because yeah. she just told us that. Yeah, they walked off the she got sick again. The doctor yeah. said the, the doctor said as long as we came to the conclusion that as long as those all the, what she ate is still in her system any any kind of residue from that is still in her system yeah. when, uh, when the EpiPen, the epinephrine wears off it's going to come back into full effect. Her body's going to keep reacting to it as long as it's in yep. her system. And that's exactly what kept happening. That's exactly what it did. So, she ended up staying at Birmingham, I think, for like a night or two. I can't remember exactly. Um, and then, you know, we went through the process of getting the EpiPens and all that kind of stuff. But after all that, all that happened, you know, they finally got it under control, got the whole thing resolved. Now we know, stay away from tree nuts. But big shout out to Children's Hospital in UAB. I mean, in Birmingham. I don't know if that's UAB. But they're the best. They are the absolute best. Everybody, it seems like everybody cares the utmost, truly cares about what they're doing there. It was great. It was amazing. Thank y'all so much for watching that. Love y'all. I got to rest my voice. <coughs> and we're about to be a church. But Jesus loves you. Dill family loves you. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Okay, all those wonderful things. We will see y'all on the next vlog.